I want to take you to an advanced skill here, number 25, where we're going to talk about this skill called linearization. Let's get into it. Number 25 says, which graph represents a circuit element and which a circuit element we could, we could also call commonly call a resistor. Whoop. Okay, so a resistor at constant temperature. Now that's secret code language. If you know some physics concepts, constant temperature is going to mean constant resistance if this resistor obeys Ohm's law. We would also say if it's an ohmic resistor. Um, so that's what they're secretly telling you. We're gonna have CONST constant R constant resistance for this resistor. And Ohm's law again, when they say Ohm's law, it's V equals I times R. So we're going to linearize Ohm's law. Now V equals I times R could also be written as V equals R times I. All right, I times R is the same thing as R times I. And so I'm going to rewrite it V equals R times I here. And then I'm going to write slope intercept form without the Y axis intercept piece, the, the plus B at the end. So we have Y equals MX plus b, but imagining that b is equal to zero, so we don't have to write it. Plus zero is, you know, nothing. So y equals mx. Why did I write that? Because I want to lineify Ohm's law, and y equals mx is the equation for a line, and so linearization is just like saying lineify or make this thing look like a line so that when you graph it you get a nice straight line. The slope then will tell us something. That's why we do this is we can find something new from things that we've measured. And so you can see all these all the uh, choices they all have voltage V on the y-axis and current I on the x-axis. And uh, so then what I want to do is I want to rearrange Ohm's law so that when I write it above y equals mx I line the voltage with the y, because voltage is being graphed on the y-axis, and so I line that up, and then I want to line up the i's, the i's, with the x, because i is being graphed on the x-axis. And then what I'm left with, what I'm left to discover, is that my resistance lines up with the slope. And so what I'll see is I'll get a, if I get the slope of this line, if I graph voltage on the y-axis, current on the x-axis, and I get the slope of this line, I will get the resistance of this resistor. And so this is almost like a super skill. If you can linearize things, you can find things that you would not otherwise be able to find. And so if you talk about a resistor, it can't have, n they don't have negative resistance, and they're not going to have changing resistance at constant temperature. We said they're going to constant R, so we need a constant slope, and it needs to be positive because we have a positive resistance. Um, and so we're going to find this is the only option that has a constant positive slope, that, that line moving up and to the right. Um, a would have a slope of zero, C would have a constant negative slope, and B would have a constantly increasing positive slope. And so none of those would work for what we're looking for here. Now this was a pretty advanced question, um, and this is an advanced skill to linearize things. Let me just take you through a couple more examples then, because it's, it's probably not going to click just the very first time. Um, now, in number 26, a student in an electricity lab plotted the graph um, below of current I established in a particular circuit as a function of voltage V applied to the circuit. What or which mathematical relationship most probably exists between the current and voltage? And then our options are very mathematical, direct linear, inverse, direct square, inverse square. Now I've written in what those things mean, but direct linear is what we're going to be seeing. And you can actually just, if you know math, you don't even know, you know physics here, because you can see the graph, and it's got a straight line going up and to the right. So it's got a positive constant slope, and so an inverse relationship would have a negative uh, slope, and then the squares would have curved lines. And so we're gonna see, um, that this answer should be this. Now, uh, should be A, direct linear. And that would look like Y equals MX um, plus B, but B is, in, is, is hitting the zero there, the Y intercept at zero, so you don't need to write it. And so again, we, we, um, 
works. But here's what we they one little trick one little trick they pulled on us here is that they actually switch the axes on us. So if you look here we have current on the Y and voltage on the X. And so let's see if we can take Ohm's law and rearrange it a little bit to fit that. V equals I times R. Divide both sides by R. Okay, R is gone on the right. So we have if we write this from left to right, we have I by itself equals V over R. And then isn't that the same thing as writing I equals one over R times V? Isn't that the same mathematically? And then let's line that up with Y equals MX. Y equals MX. So I graphed on the Y and um, V graphed on the X will give you a slope of one over R. And so if we were to actually calculate this slope, this slope would equal the inverse of the resistance, one over R. Okay, number 27. Since the graph here shows the relationship between current and potential difference for four resistors A, B, C, and D. Resistors A, B, C, D. Which resistor has the greatest resistance? So we have potential difference, voltage graphed on the Y, and current is graphed on the X, and then we see all of these lines. Okay, so we're linearizing again. Um, I've written over here V equals I, R times I, and Y equals M times X. And so R is gonna be the slope as we've just discussed. And so if you know about your slopes, you can quickly pick this answer because we're gonna see that if we just kind of label this visually here, um, so R, A has the biggest slope. It's the most rise for the same, for less run. And so we're gonna have a big R there Whereas the D has the slowest, or the, the slowest, the smallest slope, and so it's got a lot of a lot of run for a little bit of rise, and so it's a little R there. And then these would kind of be like proportionately sized in between. And so A is gonna have the largest slope and therefore the largest resistance.